So I'm here to talk to you about Uber and the future of work. Um, now, when people think about the future of work, oftentimes some of the first things that come to mind are AI, it's about automation, it's about how robots are going to take over jobs that are currently being done by humans. Or they think that it's about new tools for productivity, um, you, you know, new labor practices and so on. When we think about the future of work, it's not necessarily about robots, it's not necessarily about these new advanced tools and things like that. When we think about the future of work, we don't look at it as something that's happening in the future, we actually look at it as something that is present and is happening now. When you think about work, this is something that's such a core and essential part to all of our lives. It's something that we get up and we do every single day. It's the way that we are able to sustain ourselves. It's the way that we're able to sustain our families. So how do we think about work as it is today? Globally, there is a workforce of about 3.5 billion people. Out of this, about 3% are freelancers and are self-employed. And when we talk about freelancers or self-employed, there's a whole ladder, right? Like it ranges all the way from doctors and lawyers to even janitors and domestic workers. Out of this 3.5 billion, 0 0.5 only are part of what we call this new gig economy or platform economy. So these include your Uber driver partners and couriers, these are your couriers on Sendy, these are your people who have Airb their, their houses out on Airbnb. Um, but I think the point of this slide is really just to say that it's really just a sliver of what the global workforce is, is going through. In the last few years, the gig economy, this new term, this buzzword that everyone is talking about, we feel like it has grown tremendously. But this is by far not the norm. In fact, there's a study by Harvard and Princeton professors that says that most workers still prefer nine to five schedules. So we still have a long way to go when it comes to this technological gig economy type of work. And yet, on platforms like Uber, over 4 million people have used Uber globally to make money in the last month. And the question really that I want to try and answer for you is why and what are we doing about it? The first reason is access. When you look at Sub-Saharan Africa, over the last decade, or at the end of 2020, we will have had 122 million people enter the workforce. At the same time, over the last decade, we have only been able to create 37 million new jobs. Look at the disconnect that we have there. And even of that 37 million, only about a third of them are in the formal sector. Boston Consulting Group released a report earlier this year in March about how online marketplaces can power employment in Africa. And one of the big takeaways that they found from that report is that online marketplaces and digital platforms have the ability to create three million new jobs in Africa alone. And out of that, if you just step back and think about what this three million number means, it's Five, it's one opportunity for every 500 Africans, one opportunity for every 150 unemployed Africans, and very importantly for our economies, that's one opportunity for every 15 unemployed youth. So the power of the digital economy of online marketplaces, it's tremendous. And it's really, really important that since we are such, in such a nascent stage, that we need to think about how we can promote the growth of the digital economy. In mobility in particular, they say that by 2025, mobility platforms like Uber, like Bolt, will have the opportunity to create over five, about 500,000 new opportunities on the continent. To date, in Sub-Saharan Africa, Uber has helped to create opportunities for over 59,000 drivers. 
So when you, con when you, co when you compare this to the 500,000, we're barely scratching the surface. There's still a massive, massive amount of potential for growth. When we look at Uber in Kenya, at the moment we've got about just over 6,000 drivers um, operating in Kenya. And when we ask drivers, you know, what are the reasons why you choose to join Uber, among the top reasons cited are around consistent earnings. They want to earn more than their previous job, they want a steady way to make income, and they also cite examples of being their own boss and flexibility as things that are very important to them. We did a study recently on the driver base, and something that we found really interesting is that Uber's not a last resort option. It's not what you do if you can't find other employment. Actually, 95% of drivers who are on the platform left full-time, part-time, or self-employment in order to find a consistent way to make a living. Um, and even of those 95%, um, about 70% of them left full-time employment to do this, um, and about 14% of them still maintained some sort of side hustle as well. So knowing Kenyans, you know, a side, a side hustle is something that's quite common. Um, one of the things that are really, really important to drivers and that they always talk about and to gig economy workers is, is this whole notion of flexibility. The ability to work when you want and how you want. Um, and this is where you know, applications like ours have become really critical in providing those platforms for people to be able to truly do flexible work. What you see on the screen here is essentially a screenshot of what the driver app looks like. And you see this big button that says go. So when you press go, you are online, you can start receiving requests. And when you're done, you just push that button again. You can do this for as long as you want, wherever you want, anytime you want. And flexibility is something that's really, really important to drivers, and this is what they continue to tell us. And when you think about the notion of flexibility, this is really a two-way, two-dimensional way of flexibility, right? There's no shifts, there's no commitment, there's no exclusivity. This is very different from your traditional type of one-way flexible employment where your employer or your boss can impose shifts on you, can impose fixed schedules on you. Um, this really is the new essence of what it is like to be your own boss. In fact, this whole notion of flexibility is something that is really valued and can actually be quantified. So in the US, there was a study that was done by Yale and UCLA and some Uber researchers, and what they found is that flexibility is so important to workers that they, that they can quantify it at the value of $160 a week. We did a study also earlier this year in London where we, we, we found that Uber drivers, because of having flexibility, are much happier than other similar workers in London. And in fact, what many of the drivers told us is that you would have to pay them 25% more in order for them to go back to having a fixed schedule. But as wonderful as this notion of flexibility is, it doesn't come, it comes with challenges as well. And this is something that we really have to think about. Because the impression that everyone has is that, look, I'm independent, I have flexibility. But on the other side, if I was an employee and I had a full-time job, I would have access to all sorts of benefits. Is this really the case? The ILO have said that only a minority of the global labor force have effective access to employment injury protection. Now this is something that's really important to note because we're having discussions all over the world, and I'm sure you've read about many of these instances in the news, where there's this whole question around, you know, should Uber drivers be classified as independent contractors, or should they be classified as employees? Actually, what we're saying is that because of the benefits, and because the benefits are such a challenge, especially to those people who are on the lower side of the economic ladder, is this really the right question to be asking? Because economic er employment benefits are such a challenge even for many employees today. And really what the question should be about is quality work versus low quality work. 
And let's be honest, when Uber started, this isn't even something that we were really thinking about. Our founders were just excited that we had created an app and you can press a button and you can you know, get a car to show up. And this was you know, the coolest thing ever. Um, but since that time, we have grown tremendously. And we have learned so much along the way. When we first started, we didn't have to think about these kinds of things. But now really thinking about work and what that means for drivers, what it means for employees, what it means for riders, th this is really, really critical stuff that we have to think about. And as we think about this whole notion of protection, we ask ourselves, what is it that we can do as platforms? What is our responsibility in creating this, no this, this protection piece so that um, all drivers on the platform can feel protected in some way? Our CEO uh, made the following statement. He said, at a basic level, Everyone should have the ability to protect themselves and their loved ones when they're injured at work, get sick, or when it's time to retire. And in the US, we're having this large conversation together with labor and other leaders around how to you know, encourage the government to think seriously about portable benefits for independent workers. We're excited to say that Uber has invested in innovative insurance programs, and today over two million drivers and delivery partners across the globe are covered by insurance. And that includes Kenya as well. So last year in December, we partnered with um, Old Mutual and UAP to offer partner injury protection. Um, so I don't know if you know about this or not, but if a driver is injured on trip um, in an accident, then they are fully covered by insurance paid for by Uber, so that if they have to go to hospital in case of death or disability, um, you know, they, they, there's a payout. And what's also really unique is this whole thing about injury protection. So after an accident, for every day that you can't work, you actually receive, um, you know, a daily, I don't want to call it a stipend or what the correct word is, but you get a daily payout. Um, so this is a first step in Kenya, and I think that there's a lot more that we can still do here in this space. In addition to that, the other things that Uber really tries to work on are what are the different kind of deals that we can negotiate because we have that kind of scale in order to benefit drivers, in order to lower their operating costs. So this ranges all the way from you know, fuel deals to discounts on maintenance. Um, and I think something that we are, we, we are famous for or really have been able to innovate in the market is around access to finance. Um, and access to finance has also been found in the BCG report, and I think we can even talk about it later, as one of the key enablers for driving this online marketplace. Um, so today, drivers are able to access 100% financing to get a vehicle loan on the basis of their Uber driver rating um, and consistent earnings. So they don't have to put down collateral, um, and this is something that's really new in the way that banks are now thinking about finance. And finally, as Rosemary alluded, as Rosemary spoke about, there's this notion of opportunity, about lifelong learning and education. And this is something that is very important to Uber, and it's an area that we have really been investing heavily in. Just in Kenya, you'll see there's a number of logos up here. This is something that's been you know, a top of mind and really forefront in the way that we think we can add value to drivers. We have a partnership with Old Mutual to give financial literacy training to drivers. We work with this platform called EduMe for online training. We've also been working with a Kenyan startup called ZD. I don't know if any of you have heard of them, but we've been working with them for the last year, and we've been crafting out special courses that drivers are interested in taking, whether it's around like first aid and what to do in case of an accident, to money management tips, to um, you know, learning how to make money online and things like that. And this is something that your drivers are really excited about. We've had over 1,500 drivers complete courses. We have 1,500 drivers at any one time actively learning. Um, and this is all about e-learning, quick, short courses on your phone. This is really fantastic. Um, one of the big announcements that we're making in the very near future, and you guys get a sneak peek now, is we've got a great partnership with the African Management Initiative. And under this partnership, we have crossed a special blended learning course specifically for female driver partners to teach them entrepreneurship skills. Um, and this is something that we are super excited about because we need to do much more investment in our women. 
Um, it's great that Philip is here um, for for because we, we've also got a, a partnership with Arizona State University in the U.S. and. For our most loyal drivers in the US, Uber pays 100% of your university tuition to go back to school. And this is transferable also to a family member. This is a program that we are incredibly excited about that's received you know, a lot of uh, you know, appreciation in the US and we're looking at rolling this out globally. So I hope one day in the very near future we can replicate something like this for Kenya as well. So I think just to sum up, the four things that are super important as we think about work. The first is around access, making sure everyone can get opportunity with low barriers to entry for work. That you're able to do this on your own schedule. You work where you want, when you want, how you want, which is critical for people who are caregivers, who have other responsibilities. That this flexibility doesn't come at the cost, at a cost to you, and that you do have protection underlying your independent work. Um, and finally, to really think about opportunity and lifelong learning so that everyone can continue to grow and be upwardly socially mobile. Um, and we can't do this alone. Um, I think Uber is really excited to be part of this conversation, um, you know, part of this initiative, part of you know, talking about future of work. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all about partnership. It's all about doing it in conjunction with other organizations, um, having important conversations like this. Um, and I think as all of you know and you'll appreciate, tech, the world, everything is growing and evolving so fast that it's impossible to just sit still and come up with the answer today, right? The answer, today's answer may not suit tomorrow, may not suit the day after. So this constant cycle of innovation um, is something that we must continue to do and we can't do it alone. So that's it for me. Thank you very much.